site, which is uncontrived because you haven't seen it before, and it has the features you're really looking for. There were some places in Robot City where it's so yeah, but there are other test sites available for robotics systems too. Where you can put it. You can put this. are the Polaris Integration Field Testing and Performance Evaluation Group. We like to call ourselves Polaris ITE because the first thing is kind of a mouthful. I'm John Anderson. I'm John Porter. I'm Carlo. Ron Koski. Okay, so the first question you probably have is what is Polaris? Polaris is a prototype lunar rover that's designed to search for ice at the poles on the moon. So basically, the Polaris that we've been working on and integrated is a mobility platform that will transport specific scientific payloads that will be able to locate and quantify ice at the poles of the moon. So for the integration, we put together a time lapse that really documents it uh, pretty well. Uh, this is actually photos taken over 30 days, one minute apart. It was about 38,000 photos total. So here you can see we're putting the chassis together that required a lot of match drilling and bonding different components together. Uh, you can see those going in, some of them come in and out and in and out. Then after that, the next thing we did was put on the base plate to get the whole box done and get that assembled. And in the meantime, while the chassis was being painted, the shoulders were assembled on the bench and tested with the differencing, and some of the electronics integration was started. So once the chassis came back, those were installed. All the electronics were installed and the wiring began. Uh, you can see here wiring going into the robot in different places. Uh, same time while the wiring was happening, some of the swing arms were coming onto the side, the wheels were being worked on. So unfortunately this doesn't capture everything, but it kind of shows the robot come together from pieces and pieces coming in from other places and going on. And here in a second you'll actually see us take it, put it on the ground and drive away. So it's, it's a neat thing to have kind of from the start to end of, of this robot coming. So to summarize that video and everything that John just talked about, we do have Polaris up and running. Um, we've completed that mechanical and electrical integration. And we have developed our field testing strategy as well as completing of, or sorry, completion of the specification sheet which we have passed around. To look a little closer at that specification sheet, here are a few of the specs that we wanted to highlight. Uh, you can see the dimensions, the mass, uh, one kind of important part of this is the rated payload. So for those of you who would be developing a payload for this um, platform, you've got about 80 kilograms that you can use there. Um, and then I'll, I'll let you guys read through that spec sheet a little bit more. Um, but please let us know if you have any questions. I do also want to mention that this spec sheet is based on design. We have not gone out into the field yet. We have not verified these values. And that is something that we will accomplish with the field testing coming up. So in some of our first driving tests, we noticed a problem with the suspension that we refer to now as a swing arm lifting issue, uh, which is exactly what this video demonstrates um, on a flat carpet surface. So the one degree of passive freedom in the suspension um, is supposed to give you ground compliance so that um, while four wheels over to find a plane, the one degree passive degree of freedom um, ensures that all four wheels are in contact with the ground. But as you can see, that's exactly not what we're getting. Um, and it's a function of different frictional forces combining in a way that makes it easier for the wheels to lift themselves um, than for the wheels to slide on the ground. Um, next slide. So we've spent a fair amount of time looking at this um, as I said, it's a big problem because it's unpredictable and it results in high instability. Um, so there's a few possible factors. One is friction between the wheels and the ground. Skid steering and the suspension relies on wheel slip, and if that wheel slip doesn't happen, you can get uh, swing arm lifting. Another is friction in the differencing system itself. If that friction is too high, it limits your restorative force. Um, uneven mass distribution is also a potential problem because there's no payload in, there's not a lot of mass on the two wheels that are lifting, also affecting restorative force. 
And then finally, there's things relating to the geometry of the rover. Um, so the length of the swing arms and the relative angle also affects the um, sort of the torques created by a restorative force. Um, and so we've developed a systematic plan to test each of these as individually as we can. So for example, we want to go to a, a certain terrain with flat ground, replicate the result, and then change the parameters. So maybe we'll remove the lip seals to reduce the friction in the system and see if we can re replicate that result in the same way or maybe in a less frequent way and sort of go through um, that um, with mass on the payload area and with mass not and see if we can narrow down what factors are causing it um, and hopefully it's not a configuration level problem. Um, so once we can find a solution to alleviate this problem, we can go on to more um, conventional field tests, which we're going to talk about. So now we enter the field testing stage, and uh, we would like to test a few things. First, as John said, the specification of estimates is, uh, for manufacturer limits and so on. So we would like to confirm them, the max speed, the slope, the power consumption, etc. Another thing we would like to do is do some qualitative uh, evaluations, such as the uh, swing arm lift, the top explain now, or the slow performance, the, and generally commutative uh, uh, distance that we check things. And this time next week we will do an outdoor experiment at uh, NASA Glenn Research Center. Uh, well, we could use the great uh, sandbox they have there that you can change the slope uh, angles and so on when you are on sandbox. Uh, to do that, we would have to uh, prepare the robot by adding uh, double the amount of batteries. To do that, we would have to add another shelf for the batteries. We would also like to monitor the power consumption, so we we'll add that monitor. Uh, we would also have to do things such as a cover a robot against sand and dust particles, etc. Uh, so, to go to Glenn, we would, ah, we would also want to do is simulate the payload. To simulate the payload, we would add a, a mass bar, you can see there, to the robot. That mass bar is easily removable and it allows us to add normal lifting weights to the mass bar to simulate whatever payload we want. And uh, we would also want to uh, test things at a uh, plant center using a uh, sensor, such as the ones we mentioned. But we would also try to add phones as accelerometer measurement, gyroscope, and for outdoor testing, GPS, and so All right, so in the next <coughs> few weeks, we plan to continue to test the swing arm lift and to find a good solution and try to implement that. Also, we will continue to update the spec sheet as we do more field testing. And we also plan on completing the assembly documentation as we continue to do more field testing. And by the end of the Semester, we plan to have the final tech report, which will, which will consist of our results, our documentation, and a quick summary of what we've been doing all semester. A uh, question about the mass bar: Is that fixed to the front of the robot there in that position, or can you move it up and down the length of the robot? And why would you do it? Fixed, and it's because right now all the mass is in the back, so that's in the, the payload side of the rover. Yeah. One thing on the spec sheet, um, and particularly if you're doing this, it might be nice to see the center of gravity. Yeah, we can do that. Um, let's see, what is the uh, spec sheet besides the payload mass? Would you guess that the swing arm lift is better or worse in moon gravity versus Earth gravity? 
Oh, it's going to be a lot worse, and that's one of our concerns because the restorative force is so much less. Now, it's bad enough when we've heard that it eat your lunch when you move. Yeah. And uh, so it, it is masterful. <coughs> this ambition, uh, uh, I, I, this is the first time I heard you to uh, NASA Glenn. That's the big leagues. And it is very straight of a research team to air the dirty laundry and to uh, take your difficulties out there from God the world. And uh, it's the right thing to do. The more brains that are on this thing, the better the chance of getting a big idea. Don't you guess at some point there's a big idea that really explains this thing away? There's something that, that this crowd is not yet seeking that's a big idea. Uh, given all the different ways Is there, um, when uh, a robot is driving and body averaging, is some of the robot's power being expended by the averaging? So it's another good way to test your expended power, you know, get the wheels up condition, size, uh, idling the wheels, you can crank the suspension with the wheels up circumstance. So you can drive it if you need to drive the observable power into it. That's time.
Jesus.